Hello, welcome back. We're going to do statistics now. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do four different vid- or uh, multiple videos. Four, three, two, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm either going to do a bunch of videos all at once, or and I'm going to like section it off and break it into four videos, or if I'm just going to make one big video. Either way, today we're talking about data distribution, or this week we're talking about data distribution. Uh, this kind of goes into um, looking at a graph, looking at a chart, and just making inferences about the data without make, drawing any hard conclusions, without actually looking at what the mean, median, mode, or range is. At least not at this moment. So first of all, displaying data. Uh, data can be blank in various graphs. Well, this is going to be displayed. It can be displayed in various graphs, including dot plots, histograms, and box plots. Box plots are useful for showing blank and blank. So for this one, we're going to be saying, let's see, dot plots, that's what these are. They're useful for showing things called spread and symmetry. That's what these are really good for. When you have a dot plot, uh, out of those three dot plots, histograms, and box plots, dot plots are going to be the most uh, accurate. They're going to have the most amount of information that you can gain from them. Uh, what spread is, when we use that word, spread is variability or the spread in data points, and it describes how far apart data is from one another. So spread, that would be, for example, um, talking about grades, like on various quizzes and tests, uh, a good test that if I give it should have very little spread, very little variability. All my students should be scoring relatively high. If I have a wide spread, that means I have some students doing really well, some doing really bad. Uh, this can also be represented by the blank. Uh, this is going to be range. Range tends to measure variability. I think that's in our definition somewhere. Median and mean are both represented by the center of data. When the data is skewed, the blank is the best representation of data. So when it looks like this, if it's kind of lopsided on one side, if you see that your data is lopsided, you're actually going to want to use the median more often. If it's more symmetrical and balanced, then you can start trusting the mean. And this is something, uh, it's not in our notes, but I want you to add it. Uh, the reason is because of things called outliers. Now, an outlier, you don't need to write this down, it might help, but an outlier is a piece of data that doesn't belong for one reason or another. It's a piece of data that is messing up the rest of your data. Like if you have a chart, uh, a dot plot, and you got all your dots all over here, everything looks good, and then you have one way over there. That's an outlier. That is going to mess up your mean and drag all of your all of your data this way. That's not good. So uh, shape, symmetric. You guys understand symmetry. Uh, symmetrical just means you could draw a line down it and it's balanced on each side. This is pretty overall in theory. This should be the most common. In real life, this almost never happens. Not perfectly, anyways. Uh, skewed right means that you have very little data to the right. Skewed left means you have very little data to the left. Skewed does not tell you which way that most of the data is. It tells you where the data is not. Moving on, uh, it asks us to use, uh, add, use this dot plot to answer these questions. Uh, at a doctor's office, the pulse of each patient was taken and recorded. The data was displayed in the dot plot below. So here we have it. What is the lowest pulse? Well, that would be 64 beats per minute, BPM. So 64 beats per minute. What is the highest pulse? Well, that'd be 80 beats per minute. What's the most common? Well, most common, the one that shows up the most, that would be 70 beats per minute. 
How many people had a pulse over 76? Well, let's check. Uh, only one. One poor guy. How would you describe the general spread of the data? Uh, I would say it's almost symmetrical. So, almost symmetrical. But it's skewed to the right. I put two W's in there, and I shouldn't have. It's going to be skewed to the right, because I have this one guy over here, whose heart rate was much higher than the rest. So this is what we would call an outlier. Without this piece of data, our data almost looks perfectly symmetrical. It's maybe a tiny bit skewed one way or the other, but it's mostly symmetrical. Then you throw that guy in, and the data's ruined. That's what we would call an outlier. Moving on, this would be the second page, or the second file, part of the file. Uh, it says, doo -doo 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 -doo, scrolling up, analyze the data distribution of the dot plots below, then complete the chart with your findings. Hmm. All right, so we've got plot A. Where is most of the data located? That's to the left. To the left. Uh, how spread out is the data? Eh, I mean, it goes from like 0 to 6. Kind of spread. Kind of spread out. Analyzing data charts, by the way, is not an exact science. There is no like definite right way answer for this one. You can say, you could argue this is not very spread out because the distance from 0 to 6 is very small. You could argue this spread is huge because it takes up six, uh, more about 80% of the entire chart. It's kind of up to you. Uh, I'm looking at this chart over here and comparing it and deciding this one's going to be more spread out, so I'm saying this one's kind of spread. Is the data grounded around the left, middle, or right? Well, again, this is mostly to the left. What could this data represent? Um, this could represent how many children do your parents have. This could represent how many pets you have. This could represent how many cars uh, does your family own. Like, these numbers all go from 0 to 6, and the most common answer was 1 and 2. And to me, like, that could be how many siblings do you have. There is a ton of different answers you could put here, so I'm going to put siblings... Because it could be how many siblings you have. It could be how many fish does Mr. Altimer catch when he goes fishing. Uh, this is a really good day. This is a pretty bad day. Uh, let's see. Where is most of the data located for plot B? Eh, everywhere. Uh, maybe at 20 or near 20 could be a good answer. Uh, you could argue it's mostly in on the right, but... It's very spread out. Uh, very spread out. This data is kind of everywhere. Is the data grounded around the left, middle, or right? Uh, mostly to the right. And what could this data represent? Well, this one goes from 10 to 24. And 20 was the most often. So this one could be... Perhaps, how many hours do you spend watching TV when we're not in uh, quarantine? Uh, this could be, I don't know, how many times do you... Uh, uh, how many cups of water do you drink? This could be, how many Skittles do you eat uh, in a week? I don't know. It could be how many minutes did it take you to eat an entire bag of jelly beans? I have no idea what this could be. Uh, so this one, I don't know. We'll say hours of TV. Because that seems like a reasonable amount. But maybe. Analyze the shape of the data distribution in the histograms below. Then answer the questions. So let's see, we've got baseball points. There's kind of a typo in this one. Uh, in that it asks the same question 
twice. So I'm going to change this to height of pediatric patients. There we go. So uh, what is what can most of the data be fat? Blech. I'm completely botching this entire question. Uh, the histogram shows the number of points. What is the type of distribution? Skewed right, definitely. Skewed right, absolutely. Where can most of the data be found? Uh, to the left. Uh, what about the number of patients? This one is the opposite. This one is skewed left. Where can most of the data be found? Right. There we go. Now, the third page. Uh, this is the page that you're going to want to actually type in your answers. Uh, your answers to this page one through six. Uh, this is what I'm going to actually need you to type in your answers for. Now, you don't have to do complete sentences. You do not have to do, you don't have to copy the questions, any of that. Um, all you have to do is in the top, I think right corner is that submit answer button. You click that button and it, it opens up a text box. Just type one and then dash and then type in your answer, enter two dash and type in your answer and yada yada yada. Um, as you can plainly tell by those examples, this will not take you a ton of time, and some of this will not have a correct answer. Like number seven, that's not going to have a right answer. Uh, number six, new resident had six pets, how does this compare to the rest? Again, that's not, not really a wrong answer, but you know, you, I think you get the point. Uh, so yeah, that is basically it. Uh, I'll move on to part two.